our staff today, actually. Um, we, the Hella Tours place, uh, let us go up in a helicopter, and that was pretty cool. And the, the verse, of course, that he gives us is out of Isaiah 40. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And, um, you know, I just think we're, many of us are coming out of a season of um, just craziness and being tired and exhaustion and that sort of thing. And so um, the Lord just wants to just fill us and meet us right where we're at. And um, so we're just going to invite him tonight in this place. Today, in this place, we just invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite you to come and fill us up. Lord, renew our strength. Lord, would you inhabit our praises as we come to worship you? Be lifted high, be glorified in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here and that you're ever-present. Yeah, we say more, Lord. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. Praise to the 
go of all offense, any bitterness, sadness, fatigue, depression, pain. None of those things are in heaven, and we pray heaven come.
worshiping. We're, we're not just spectators, are we? No. We don't just consume worship. We do. We are. We're in it. Amen? Amen. Knows 
and play through the chorus chords. We're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and do whatever he wants to do. So Holy Spirit, would you come and invade this place? Father, would you speak to your kids? Would you tell them how much you love them? Would you do the miraculous in this room right now? We're going to wait on you, Father.
watching this uh, worship thing and this gal was getting all nutty and I'm like, oh, she looks so silly. So here we go. I'm just in this moment like, you know what? David worshiped like uninhibitedly. He worshiped. And so we sing and we dance and we shout and we look a little silly, right? So I, I know we don't usually dance at church, but we're just gonna dance a little at church, you know, shake a little. I got. I, I, I'm gonna do it too. Here we go. You guys ready? So I sing. a God worth worshiping, and he just shows up when we worship him, doesn't he? He just shows up. He's so, so good to us. So kids, we're going to release you to Kids Church. We bless you guys as you go down, and uh, why don't you say hi to somebody around you, and we will get started with some announcements. Good evening, Royal Gorge Vineyard. Um, my name's David. I was the drummer, and let me, I know you, <laughs> well, let me finish, okay? I know you guys were having really a good time, but my right leg was going numb, okay? I, I can't do this all night. So praise God, we're on to announcements, okay? And, and if this is your first time here at Royal Gorge Vineyard, we're so glad that you get to be here and be part of our family. Like, we are just are a church that's so passionate about knowing Jesus and having people experience the love of Jesus. And so we're really glad you can join us. Um, we have, if you are new, we have these cool welcome back. Jim, can you hold one up? Okay, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> so if you are new and you do not pick up a bag, I will be watching like a hawk and will chase you down the block, okay? And, and you don't want to see this chasing after you, okay? No, 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 okay. So if you're new, um, that, um, let, I have some announcements somewhere, okay? Hold on. Okay, I found it. So we are doing a, a deep sea VBS June 28th to July 1st. And uh, this is, we really love our kids here at Royal Gorge Vineyard. Um, we have some amazing parents and some amazing volunteers and staff downstairs that are just pouring into your, your kids. And we need more help, is, is what I was kind of told to say. Like, we need more volunteers. We want to put on an amazing VBS. Um, and, and right now, we're just running short. So if, if you want to help with that, there are signups in the back. Please, please help. Um, I don't want to be the only one wearing a goofy scuba diving costume to help love our kids with the word of Jesus, okay? Um, so yeah, another thing we have going on super awesome is we have a women's Bible study thing called Armor of God, and the signups are in the back at both back tables for that. Um, truthfully, I don't know much about it, but it's a really great path. Oh. oh, was it there? Oh, there it is. So you guys can look at that. And uh, what's my other one? Oh, yeah, we, we're okay. Yes, thank you. So we're doing this really cool thing. Um, we're, we're doing this uh, prayer walking thing. And, and so how this works is 
you individually as a person or with your family or with some homies or some dudes or whatever lingo you like to use, it's all, it's all cool, you know, broski if you're a little more Russian, whatever works, okay? <laughs> so basically, you will go and, and you will prayer walk. It could just be a block. It could just be your block. You can go the whole city. If you have legs of steel, go for it. Um, Tim Madigan's probably going to bike the whole thing and pray, but... Um, it, when you when you go and you, you pray pray there, then we're get, at that back table over there that's black over there. We're gonna have a map, and so then when you go in prayer walk, you come back to church, and then you go over to that table and you get a highlighter, whatever color you like, and then you highlight where you walked. And so our goal is is we wanna we wanna make sure that we just prayer walk everywhere in in, in our town and in the surrounding towns. We just really wanna um, just love on people and. and I mean, I could share story and story of, of cool things that God's done while prayer walking. Um, I really hated prayer walking. I'm an extrovert. I love talking to people. So having an assignment where it's like I just have to go walk down the street and I can't say anything, it was actually one of the most growing experiences because as I was walking, I'd walk by a house and God would say, hey, this is what's going on in this house. There's an abusive relationship. I want you to pray for protection. And so I'd just be like, whoa. Whoa. And so then I'd start praying. And so that's just some of the cool stuff that God does on prayer walking. There are some other stories where I did get to talk to people, but we don't have time for those. Um, but it's super awesome. I'd really encourage you to join us. Uh, and last but not least, um, our tithes and offering, um, they belong both in the back two boxes. And I'm going to pray for that and then welcome Greg up. So Jesus, thank you so much for just your love for us, God. Thank you so much that the drummer survived playing today. He was really wearing out, God. And I, I also just want to thank you for just this generous church, God, and, and all the projects that are, are just being funded and, and the things that are happening through the generous giving of everyone here, God. Thank you so much for, um, just for your love and just the way you pour it out, God. Thank you so much for just the way you love us, God. I just pray that the tithes and offerings go even further than they ever have before, God, and that we're able to reach even more people and they're able to experience your love. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Why don't you join me in welcoming Pastor Greg. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Got some big fans right over here. <laughs> well, it's so good to be with you guys. You guys getting too cold? No, you're all right. If you get cold, just go like this, and that means... Somebody will come and turn the AC down. All right, so great to be back teaching. I took uh, some time off in May. I was asked to take a break and take a breath, and I hadn't done it in a long time, so it was, it was good. I went on vacation for a week. I did some bike riding. I installed a window at my duplex. I fixed my Jeep. Uh, then our dog died, and then Alicia's dad died. And then last weekend, we were in uh, Winter Park area for a family reunion. So it was kind of a busy time uh, last month. And, uh, but it's so great to be back, to be with all of you and teaching again. And uh, so tonight we're going to uh, look at exploring Philippians. So let me just pray before we start. Lord, I just pray that you would speak through me. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We cherish it. It's your language to us. It's your promise to us. And so, Lord, help us to soak it in today. Help us to penetrate our heart and touch us to our very core. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so let's look at uh, Philippi. I've got a map of Philippi. And uh, it's in the Mediterranean Sea area. And... Uh, Leash and I, we got to go to Corpusus, which is in Turkey, but up above this whole area, Philippi. And I got a picture of some ruins there. Um, it's, it's a beautiful area. It's like very green and uh, temperature's pretty nice there year round. But uh, anyways, that's just an example of it. It was a major Greek city, all right? So uh, this is also in Acts 16, if you read Acts 16, Remember when uh, Paul, he casts out a demon of this lady. Well, they get all upset with him, and they throw Silas and Paul. They beat him. They flog him, which they did to Jesus 39 times, whipped him, put him into prison. They're singing hymns to God. 
and, the, and everybody's listening, and an earthquake happens, and the gates open, the chains fall off of them, and they end up leading the guard to Christ. So that happened in this city right here. So let's uh, start with it says, uh, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all of God's holy people in Christ Jesus, at the overseers and the deacons from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wanted to look at this word in Christ. You see this a lot in the New Testament. In Christ, in him, through him, with him. Uh, let's look at one in uh, Ephesians 4.19. It says, no, it's not Ephesians, Philippians 4.19. Sorry, get on the right book. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, what's God do? Jesus meets all our needs, right? In Christ. There's something about being in Christ. And Paul says in Philippians uh, 1.21 here, he says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So it's in Christ we're raised up, right? It's in Christ we're set free. It's in Christ that we sit in heavenly places. It's in Christ that you are justified. It's in Christ that you are made holy, the righteousness of God. So we see this throughout this New Testament. In Christ, it's talking about our identity. You know, it's in Christ that I've been redeemed. I was lost. I was, I was running from God. I was uh, a drunk. I was, I was a mess. But God redeemed me. In Christ, I am redeemed. In Christ, he set me free. In Christ, I'm a new creation. In Christ, I'm the righteousness of God. In Christ, I have all power and authority over the devil. That's the promise of the word of God. And in Christ dwells in me. And so I get to tell him to get behind me, Satan. I rebuke you. I don't listen to your lies. Get behind me. I refuse to believe your lies. So I thank God that he's made me righteous. It's in Christ have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. I'm free from condemnation. In Christ, I can do all things. In Christ, all things work together for my good. It's Christ who strengthens me. It's Christ who has anointed me. It's Christ who set a seal of ownership upon me and put his spirit in my heart. It's all in Christ. And if you guys belong to Jesus, if he's your Lord and Savior, then you too can tell the devil to get behind you. You just stomp on him and say, Satan, get behind me. I bind and break you in Jesus. I'm a new creation in Christ. I've been set free. I don't listen to your lies. I don't believe in the condemnation that you're trying to put upon me. I'm set free. It's worked together for me. You guys, all your names have been sealed. The promise of heaven written in the Lamb's book of life. He's put a spirit in your heart, his spirit in your heart. So Paul's talking about here, he's talking about that Christ could be seen as great in Philippians 1, 20, 1, 20. Amplified, it says, it's my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored, magnified, and caused to be seen great in my body, whether by life or by death, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul's getting passionate about something here, isn't he? He's just saying, hey, I want to, Christ to be magnified in all I do in my life, and even whether I die. And so hopefully this is our passion too, that Christ would be magnified. That Christ would be seen as great, supremely great. This is why God created us, why he saved us, to make Christ look like what he really is, and that's supremely great. You know, Christian, that word Christian actually means Christ-like. Paul's saying, you know what? Everything is about being Christ-like. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So there's this relationship between verse 20 and 21. We see this word live. It also can be the same as life, right? We see die, we see live. Um, so it could read like this. For me, for to me, my life is Christ. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying his life is Christ. He's all about Christ, isn't he? 
I mean, he's been beaten and put into prison and he's, and he's uh, singing hymns. <laughs> he's actually writing this letter while he's in prison. He's encouraging people to be all on board for Jesus in prison. He talks about, have you ever heard that scripture that my life is hidden? I'm hidden in Christ. That's what he was encouraging us to be. So they go and they look for Paul, but they see this reflection of Jesus. Well, where's Paul? He's, he's hidden in Christ. <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be cool? Somebody's looking for you. I didn't find Matt, but I found Christ because his life is so hidden that we just saw Christ manifesting in him. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at worship and glory and, and Jesus being magnified. So why did God create the world? Well, one reason God created the world is for his own praise, for his own glory. And it seems like, well, is God just an egomaniac, you know, <laughs> right? Why would he do that? So I'm going to talk to you about it. You know, Oprah Winfrey, she actually walked away from her Orthodox Christianity when she was about 27 because of the biblical teaching that God is jealous and that he demands that he and no one else gets our highest allegiance and affection. And for her, that didn't sound loving. Brad Pitt turned away from his boyhood faith, he said, because God says you have to say that I'm the best. And to him, it seemed about ego. And I, I, I laugh and I think about that as, really? And you guys don't have an ego problem? You know? <laughs> you know? And uh, so, so anyways, God created this world for his own praise. And I think about it, uh, how magnificent this creation is, right? That God breathed into I was actually on YouTube the other night watching these different stars and planets and the size of them, and it's just mind-blowing. They start off with Earth and a few moons, and then you get to stars that just dwarf it, the Earth and our own sun, and, it, and the galaxies and the nebulas, and it's it just, God, you are so magnificent. You are beyond. You are supreme, and no one else is, right? And so I have no problem giving all of my worship to the Lord. I have no problem. Why would I give it to anyone else? Uh, Pastor John Piper, he's a preacher out of uh, California. He came up with this phrase. He calls it Christian uh, Hinoism. It says this, God is most glorified in you when you are most satisfied in him. This is going to be our theme tonight. God is most glorified in you when you are so satisfied in him. So when he sees you satisfied in him, he's like, I get the glory. I get the glory. I was watching this video. It's called uh, Revivals in the Air. And it shows, you know, the song starts out, Revivals in the Air. And this girl starts at front. She starts dancing and she's getting into it. She does this spin around. and She doesn't care. And she's just getting freed up, you know. And I was like, that's it. She's so satisfied in Jesus right there. And he's getting the glory. He's glorified in her because she's just, she couldn't care less who saw her do it, you know? And so that's what I, I want us to see is that we can be so satisfied in him and God is glorified. So if that's true, then there's really no conflict between your greatest acceleration and God's greatest glorification. God is most glorified in you when you're most satisfied in him. In fact, there's not only no conflict between your happiness and God's glory, but glory shines in happiness. And when you're happy in him, and since God is the source of the greatest happiness, and since he is the greatest treasure in the world, and since his glory is the most satisfying gift he could possibly give us, therefore the kindest, most loving thing he could possibly do is to reveal himself and magnify himself, to vindicate himself for our everlasting enjoyment. In Psalm 16, 11, it says, In your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I just love that. This teaching that I've been sharing tonight has touched me, and it's made me press in even more into, Lord, am I in your will? Am I connecting with you? Am I satisfied in you right now? Or am I distracted? Or am I off on some other tangent? Or am I doing what Greg wants to do? Or am I just being satisfied in you? 
Because isn't that the challenge in life is that so many things come against us and try to take our attention away and all the promises of the enemy. It was like, this looks good. You're going to be satisfied, you know, if you do this. That's what's going to satisfy you. And uh, and our human nature and our our willingness to uh, turn and try these things turns out that those things are only temporary, aren't they? They always blow up on our face. But truly being satisfied in Jesus, that's the richest thing. That doesn't blow up on you. That's life-giving to you. God is the one for whom all self-exaltation is the most loving act because he's exalting for us what he alone can satisfy us fully and forever. That's another good thing, right? Not only here, but forever. He's the satisfier of our souls. You know, I could go around and I could exalt myself. Look at me. Woo, I've got it. Everybody gather around, right? (laughs) Exalt myself. And uh, the only problem with that is that's not very loving because it's distracting you from the one who is loving. That's Jesus. So no person can satisfy us. People will always let us down, won't they? So if you're worshiping a person, that's all doomed for failure. So it makes sense only to worship Jesus, a.k.a. God and the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus never leaves us. He never forsakes us. But a God, he, if he exalts himself, if he draws attention to himself, to the one person who can make us happy forever, himself, he is not an egomaniac. He is indefinitely glorious, all-satisfying God, offering us everlasting, supreme joy in himself. Jesus said that if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So for me, there's two meanings to that. It's the cross. They laid him on the cross and they nailed him to him and they lifted it up, didn't they? So since he was lifted up on the cross, he took upon himself all our sins. And then he rose again to new life. So if he's lifted up, all men can come to him because, what? he's forgiven the world. He's forgiven everyone. Anyone who comes in him and believes in him can have eternal life and their sins are forgiven. The other meaning, I believe, is just worshiping, lifting him up in worship. He will draw all men to him as as we lift him up in worship, exalting him. God is most glorified in you when you are most satisfied in him. So this design of God to pursue his own glory actually turns out to be love. And our duty to pursue God's glory turns out to be this quest of joy. You know, the world rings of praise. You say, oh, did you see that team? Wasn't that uh, book so good? Hey, you should try this uh, Mexican dish. It's so awesome, right? There's all this praise. (coughs) And you see people spontaneously praise what they value. And they urge us to join in, right? Did you see the Nuggets win? Yeah, boom, you know. And uh, wasn't that so good, that food? Wasn't, uh, wasn't that girl so awesome? Wasn't it glorious? Don't you think that was magnificent? So King David in Psalms, he's telling everyone to praise God. Psalms 105, 2, sing to him. Sing a praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. King David says in Psalm 34, 1, I will exalt the Lord at all times and his praise will always be on my lips. I think, this is a quote from John Piper, I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. It is not out of compliment that lovers keep telling one another how beautiful they are. The delight is incomplete until it is expressed. Isn't that good? Why do we express it? I can say, I can feel in my heart that I love the Lord and he's awesome, but something happens to me when I express it. Lord, you are awesome. Yahshua. And something deep happens in me. <laughs> and that joy starts coming up when I let it out, when I compliment the Lord. Lord, you are so magnificent, awesome. We worship you. Something happens in me. So are you guys getting this? He wants to satisfy our souls. He's the only one who can. And what's it mean, a soul? Soul is mind, will, and emotions. How does he satisfy our mind? 
See, that we can have the mind of Christ. Isn't that good news? Put on the mind of Christ. Put on the attitude that Christ had and so he can touch our minds. Uh, let's see, mind, will. And so of my will and God's will become one will. What he wants me to do is what I want to do. Isn't that a good place? That's being satisfied in Jesus. Mind, will, and, em and emotions. Emotions, emotions can be all over the place, right? Especially if you're a woman. <laughs> I like to pick on women. I don't know. If we, men need to have more emotions. I'll just say that. But so our, our emotions get sideways and go crazy, right? But Jesus can satisfy our emotions. He can line up our emotions to line up with what he's doing. You girls can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore and isn't that what I love about church is like just earlier when we were worshiping the Lord wasn't his presence here wasn't there joy in this room yes he's still bringing it he's still touching us so in demanding our praise he's demanding the completion actually of our own pleasure you know that uh, church in uh, Vineyard Church started out in California in the suburb of Anaheim called Yorba Linda in 1975. It was actually during this Jesus movement that happened out on the uh, West Coast. So all these hippies, what was happening is they were doing this free love and drugs and alcohol, and they weren't satisfied. They were empty. They were lost. They were hurting. They thought this was the thing that was going to satisfy them, and it didn't. And so what happened is something happened and the next thing sparked that they're coming to Jesus by the hundreds and hundreds and thousands. And this thing spread across California and then across the country in, a, in about 15 year time span. It was called the Jesus movement. And so you have all these people coming to Jesus and what's happening, they're getting satisfied. They're finally finding something that's touching them deeply. And so what happened in the Vineyard Church in Anaheim, they were meeting at this uh, high school gymnasium. And uh, they had service like we do. They have worship, they had announcements, they had a, a, a message, and an altar time. Uh, just a time of ministry at the end. And uh, this during worship, they're not even doing an altar call. People are being so touched. These hippies that are showing up and don't know Jesus are getting touched by and wrecked and coming to the altars and giving their life to Christ. They said, we didn't even have to give altar calls. The Holy Spirit was doing it. Wasn't that amazing? It was so powerful. Everybody was coming up. And that was the beginning of this vineyard movement back in that time. So let's look at this uh, scripture again. Philippians 1, 20 and 21. is my eager expectation and hope that I will not uh, be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored, magnified, cause to be seen as great in my body, whether by life or by death, for me, to me to, is, let me read it again, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and die is gain. Paul says this is his great passion. So I like this statement, Christ is more valuable than all that life on this earth can give. I think I got a slide for this. Christ is more valuable than all that life on earth can give us. And I think the sooner you get to that, the sooner you'll find more freedom in your life. When you stop listening to the lies of the enemy and say, my true life is in my relationship with Jesus Christ. That's my source of joy and happiness. He will look great in my life because for me to live is Christ. In Philippians 3, 8, Paul says, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. So Christ is more precious, more valuable, more satisfying than all that life on this earth can give. I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Isn't that good? For to me to live is Christ. All right, so death is gain. Let's look at this. 
It gets plainer when we consider the death half of Philippians 20 and 21. Christ will be magnified in my body by death. This is, I think, uh, 23b, because to me to die is gain. Why would death be gain? The answer is in this verse. My desire is to part and to be with Christ, for that is far better. Death is a gain because it means a greater closeness with being with Christ, right? Death is to depart and to be with Christ. Christ said, I mean, Paul said, to be absent in my body is to be present with the Lord. And so let's look at this death. If you add up all the losses of death, that will cost you. Let's say you're going to miss your family and your friends and you're going to not have your job and you maybe not have your uh, dream retirement. It's not going to happen. And you add up all these things, you're going to lose your car and vehicles and your three-car garage and all this. But to die is gain. None of that, mad, none of that adds up, <laughs> right? Because to die is gain because then you're with Christ forever. What can compare to that, right? You've ever seen these people that have died and, and they've come back to life and they said they saw the Lord. They'll, everyone will tell you none of them wanted to leave his presence. None of them wanted to come back, but they had a mission still they had to accomplish on earth. They didn't want to leave that presence. All right. So to sum up both halves of this verse, Christ is glorified in you when he is more precious to you than all that life can give or death can take. Isn't that good? He is most glorified in you when he is more precious to you than all that life can give or take. I just love that. At the cross, God upholds his glory and provides our forgiveness. At the cross, God vindicates his own honor and secures our happiness. At the cross, God has magnified his own worth and satisfies our soul because of what Jesus did for us, that we can be satisfied within our souls. It's the greatest act in history. Christ made it come true for all sinners. That God is most glorified in you when you are most satisfied in him. Let's look at death. If you want to make Christ look good in your dying, there's no big performance, is there? There's no achievement or heroic sacrifice that needs to be made. It's childlike faith to lay down your life knowing to die is gain. <laughs> right? Conversion. Many, uh, Christ changes how we look at conversion. In Matthew 13, 44, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So becoming a Christian not only means believing the truth, it means finding a treasure. So evangelism is not only about telling the truth about who Jesus is, it's telling about the greatest treasure in the world. Do you know the greatest treasure in the world? Let me tell you, it's Jesus. You know, there's these signs when we do uh, outreach on doors, you know, no soliciting. And... Uh, we just ignore, I said, when I first started out, do we go to the doors? Like, we're bringing the greatest news, Greg. We're not going to let some no soliciting sign stop us. I'm like, you're right. We're not selling a vacuum cleaner or something. We're telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest treasure in the world, and they need to know about it, right? <laughs> and so we maneuver around the barking dogs, and we knock on the door, and all the craziness that can happen out there. But <laughs> what about the fight of faith? A fight to see and Savior Jesus is more precious than anything in the world because the savoring shows him to be supremely valuable. So that's the fight of faith we're in, is to hold on to the satisfaction that only he can give us. He is supreme. He is our treasure. And it's a fight to hold on to that. It really is. It's, there's so many distractions. There's so many things that come against us from holding on to that. How about evil? We fight evil by the pursuit of the fullest satisfaction in the river of God's delight. So if we are so satisfied in him, then there's going to be less room for the enemy to try to come in, right? I'm just, I'm just getting doused in this uh, waterfall of 
of, of, of the Lord Jesus. And I'm just so satisfied in him. And so when Satan tempts me with all these things, I'm, 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 just, I'm just too overwhelmed in the Lord to even look at it. <laughs> or I'm so empowered, I tell Satan to get behind me. I don't want to hear his lies. And I, and I beat him up. And I, res, I resist him. And I draw near to God. And he draws near to me. Because we live in a world where there's warfare. It's spiritual warfare. And we have to fight. The good fight of faith. Self-denial. Christ changes the way we think about self-denial. Is there really teaching about Jesus saying to be in self-denial? I think there is. It says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This is uh, Mark 8.34. So look at it this way. You deny yourself the wealth of the world so that you can have the wealth of being with Christ. Maybe you deny yourself the fame of the world to have the joy of God's approval. You deny yourself the security and safety of the world to have really a solid, secure relationship with Jesus. You deny yourself the short, unsatisfying pleasures of this world so that you can have the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore at God's right hand. That sounds better, doesn't it? (laughs) Amen. Because to live is Christ and die is gain. Amen, 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 amen. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think all the things that we do when we're tracking with the Lord, even when we give, you know why he, what happens when we give? It says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Each one must give in his, as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The motive to a generous person is that it expresses and expands our joy. We get to give. There's joy in giving. And so all the things that Jesus taught us are for our own good, for following him, for enriching our lives, to be coming near to him. And so I just want to wrap things up. So the thing I want you to know is Christ is supreme. There is no other. We got to do a funeral up in uh, Denver for someone who died. And that was the message. I didn't know these people. But I told him, you want to be most satisfied in life. You want to live forever. Then Jesus Christ is the answer. Because there's nothing else. I've tried lots of things. (laughs) They all end up dark and bad. Jesus loves us. And so one of the expressions that I begin to do more is to uh, listen to more worship uh, in my car, uh, at home. I, I, have it play, I have it played in the garage when I'm working on the car. Worship is one of the most powerful ways to get satisfied and to connect with Jesus. Reading your word is good. Devotions are good. But there's something also powerful about worship. So if you don't know who to get, I actually made a list. There's some lists in the back of different people that I've enjoyed listening to and, and worshiping with. Uh, Jesus Culture, Kim Walker Smith, We the Kingdom, Jesus Image Worship. These are just some of the ones that connect with me. David says, Dad, who's that list for? I said, that's my list. He goes, yeah, because there's a lot of others too, Dad. <laughs> there are a lot of others. But, but my point is find somewhere. Start with, if you don't know, start with these guys and see what they touch your heart. Because like I said, when you start worshiping these songs, and this is the thing about Anaheim when it started, they weren't singing about God. They were singing to God. There's something powerful when you start worshiping directly to him. God, you're beautiful. I saw you the other day. You were on the cornfield. That's so awesome. No, when Yahshua, ah, 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 that's worshiping directly to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So why don't we have the worship team come back up? So I think the results of this is that we can get a hold of this and really remember that he is a satisfier of our souls. That joy and love, what's, what's, good, what's the outcome? What's the result of that? Love and joy begin to flow out to us, right? The flow out, and what happens when it flows out to us? Then we can have it flow out to others. Then we're giving mercy, and we're giving grace, and we're being loving, 
And we're looking more like Christ, like Paul wanted, that he would be more glorified in us when we're so satisfied in him. So get satisfied in Jesus and let the love and joy splash off onto other people. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, I want to worship. Let's worship. I don't know, Greg. You, you can just, you know, do Yeshua <laughs> for us. I, I need some voice left. Why, why, why do we got to do anything? You, you got it. <laughs>
Is, is we want to do a little bit of some prophetic ministry. And, and so well, they're going to keep playing, keep, keep worshiping Jesus, and we're just going to look out, and we're just all we're going to be doing is asking God, what are you doing? And so then we might say, hey, you in, in the red shirt, this is what I feel like God wants to say to you. And if we know your name, we'll say it. And if we have uh, something for the whole church, we'll say that too. But we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come. So if you guys want to do the vineyard with me, which is wash your hands and hold them out to dry. And, and the reason we do this is, is we just want to receive from God. We've talked all about his love tonight and he just wants to, and it's just like receiving a present. You know, it's like, this is me on Christmas morning, God. What do you have for me? So why don't we just do that and close our eyes and just, Jesus, just come right now in this moment. Meet us where we are, God. God, you know what's going on and what we need more than anyone else, more than what we think we need. You just know. You just know, Jesus. So come and minister to us right where we're at right now. Right now. So, Wyatt, I, I got something for you. God just highlighted you right away. And uh, I, I just really feel that the Lord is saying, hey, man, enough is enough. Stop dilly-dallying. And I, I, God just loves you so much. And you're just a gifted leader and just a crazy good evangelist. And you just have been kind of sidelining yourself and coming up with reasons to sideline yourself. And God just saying enough is enough, man. You are an absolute powerhouse. And what you teach and know about family and about God is so inspirational to others. And we are just so blessed and happy to have you as part of our family. And God just sees you. And, and there's all this chaos going on. And I just really feel God just kind of giving you a flashlight to get through all the darkness. And so keep holding on. So I'm gonna pray for you. So God, I just pray for Wyatt, my brother. God, just bless him. I just pray that any roadblocks and anything in his way just crumble right now. Continue just to minister to him and his family, God, as he just continues to push into the things of you, God. Thank you for the man that he is and the way that he leads and the way that he loves others, God. Just his compassionate heart as he just continues to move into the things of your kingdom. I don't know your name, but uh, the girl right by Nevaeh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like God wants wants to tell you that you are seen, that you are um, maybe have felt like you're overlooked, <laughs> and and you are seen, and you have a purpose, and you came here tonight for a reason, and um, <laughs> and now I'm putting you on the spot, but. <laughs> um, but you are so precious. You are, you're an amazing gift. You're a jewel. And, um, pause, <laughs> listening. <laughs> um, he just loves you so much. I can't even express, um, seen. So seek out your purpose because um, tonight is a beginning for you of something new and something good. Um, if you're not getting a word for you, just, just keep praying. <laughs> like um, God's doing something with that person individually. You don't have to be jealous. Um, if you keep coming, hopefully you'll all get one. <laughs> So God, just continue just to move in our midst right now. 
yeah. Uh, I see, I, I got a word for uh, Sean. It's breakthrough. But there's breakthrough coming forth. So we just agree with that word right now. But there's breakthrough coming forth. In the name of Jesus. That the places that you thought um, that God couldn't intervene or break through, that he can intervene or break through. So uh, we just receive that. He has a gift for you, that you would receive the gift he has for you. I, I, I don't know you at all, and I'm not trying to pick on you. What, what's your name, by the way? Dustin, I'm David. Um, Dustin, what I, I'm getting for you is that God wants to remind you that you're a good man and that you're a good father. Um, and that, like, kind of the insecurity around that doesn't need to be there. I don't know if any of this makes sense. I don't know you at all. I'm just practicing. But I just really feel God saying that you are a man of goodness and you are a man worth following. Um, you are a protector of women in a, in a, in a nation that is just not actively after that. And you're just doing an amazing job. You just create this bubble of protection and people feel so safe with you. And you just have one of the best hearts. I also feel, this is so random, so I'm gonna say it, but I also feel like you're really good at barbecuing. <laughs> like, I'm just practicing. Are you a good barbecuer? Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I'm glad God told me something, right, you know? Um, you got anything? Okay, so this is, this is for all of us. And I, I just, I feel like there's this big, Thing on the word forgiveness right now. We're, we're in this place in the season where we're still our, our attitudes toward each other aren't right. And, and I just feel like we're supposed to go ask for forgiveness. Whether it's to God, God forgive me for judging this person um, because they don't like this, my particular sports team. That's a really dumbed down version of all the high stakes anger we have right now. Or God <laughs> I just forgive this person for hurting me. Or even going up and saying to someone, hey, I'm so sorry for the way I treated you. Does that make sense? Like, and so I just feel like there's this big, huge call to forgiveness. And so if there's someone in the room that you need to go and say, hey, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Or, hey, I need forgiveness, I'm so sorry. There's a, we just wanna create an opportunity and a space for that. And just also a chance to just, you know, God doesn't see you for all your mess ups. He sees you for the gold in your life. Does this make sense? He, he sees you for that. Yeah. No, you first. Okay, sorry. Okay, so what I want us to do, and then Teresa's gonna call something out and then, and then we'll enter into a different type of ministry, but um, I, I would just love it if we just postured our hearts in a place where we're gonna go out and we're gonna be like, hey, I'm sorry, I need forgiveness. Like repenting, this, this, this place of, I don't have it right. I am not, Christ, like, I'm not at that level um, of Christ is everything yet. And like we're, it's, it's just, I feel like the big thing is, is asking for forgiveness and repenting for being selfish. So I would love to lead you guys through a prayer. I'm just gonna, it's gonna be a repeat after me. So, dear Jesus, forgive me for putting my needs over others. Forgive me for seeing people for their mistakes and not for the way you see them. I also just forgive anyone that's attacked me for my stance on coronavirus has attacked me for my stance on politics, has attacked me for my faith in Jesus, and I give them to you. Okay, um, Tina got a word for um, somebody, it could be one of two things, either uh, dealing with fear or depression and anxiety about their dad, or it might be a dad <laughs> that's dealing with some uh, depression and anxiety. Um, so I don't, I don't know who that is, but I'm just going to bless you <laughs> if that resonates with you at all. Um, 
so in the name of Jesus Christ we come against anxiety we come against depression in Jesus Christ's name you must bow to the name of Jesus and we invite Jesus into those places to heal to restore to make whole and that could go right along with this forgiveness piece we were just practicing so um, if that's you, you know, I forgive um, whoever it is for hurt, for uh, whatever is causing this depression or anxiety. Um, and if it's a dad, you may have to forgive yourself for your failures. Um, Jesus can restore that too. So I just pray uh, wholeness and healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now I'm going to have our closer, Matt, is going to pray for us. Afterwards, you guys can go. Um, we just always want to create space to just minister because it's so important to us that you guys get filled up so that you can continue to love people and see them the way Jesus sees them when you leave. Um, and so Matt's going to pray, and then afterwards we'll have people available. If we didn't call your name or say, hey, you're good at barbecue, come down to the front. We'd love to pray for you. Like, it, it's not just that we're, we, we want to do this so that it gets you to a place of, I feel okay to come down because those people just receive that in front of the whole church. I can go receive prayer in the front. And so we're going to have a time and space available for that. So Matt's going to pray, then you guys are free to go. Thank you so much. That is to encourage, encourage you to... Uh... Just engage that God is the here and now and the and the future. He's the God of your past and present. Uh, he is here. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to engage with the Holy Spirit that is present always. And so God, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather in your name for where two or more gather you say you're there you're here hello Lord we love you Lord and we trust you you say that you're there for the humble for the weak for the hungry for the thirsty and Lord if we're honest we all have a need that we need you to fully fill. And so may we not leave here with an emptiness, but engage with the God Almighty who is the great creator and the lover and the sustainer and the provider. Blessings flowing constantly that we just need to open our hearts and our hands to receive and to catch your goodness we praise you from generation to generation to generation to generation you have found yourself faithful people find you faithful when they engage with you Lord today may you be blessed as you go and may that blessing be shared your cup overflowing filled to the brim and flowing over for those that are around you and need it as well in Jesus name all God's people say amen amen Let's see, I just have a couple things. Um, uh, go get your kids, yeah. Uh, but let's see, I had a, I have a word for two people. Nancy, if you'd come forward, and, and there's a lady in green right there. I, uh, I feel like the Lord has a word for